Good to go. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you again for tuning in to another edition of the Gospel Truth with Dr. Demetrius Robinson. It is indeed a privilege to come into your places of business, into your homes, into your cars, wherever you may be listening to us um, over WGLB 1560 AM, the greatest gospel station in all of Milwaukee. I want to thank you for being a part of the show. And as we continue to just dialogue and discourse about prayer. We're going to continue our subject in our series that we're talking about prayer and we're talking about making prayer um, a lifestyle. And, and the Bible says this, Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Let's repeat this. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Listen, and when Jesus was referring to this, and, and we know the story that Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out the money changers and began to drive out those that were selling um, pigeons and selling doves and selling two foot cows and all these things. They were selling things in, in the, the temple for those that will go and make a uh, sacrifice in the temple. And they were selling right outside of the temple. And Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Now listen, Jesus was figuratively standing in the temple, but he was not referring to the temple. Let me say that again. Jesus was literally in the temple, but he was not referring to that brick and mortar building. He says, my house. Now, when Jesus is talking about his house, what is Jesus talking about? Or what, what function or, or what entity is Jesus referring to? He says, my house. Now, Jesus said this. He said, the foxes have holes and, and, and the birds have nests, but I do not have a place to lay my head. He says, the son of man does not have a place to lay his head. Now, we understand that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. He is the head of the church. He is the, 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 the glory of the church. He's the full weight of the church. He is the head of the church. But Jesus said that he does not have a place that is strong enough. He doesn't have a place that can carry the weight of his glory. He said he does not have a place that he can place his head on and not crush it. So he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. He's referring to the temple that you and I reside in. We are the temple of God. The Bible says, know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Listen, you got to understand that Jesus is not coming back for a brick and mortar building. He's coming back for a living entity, which is called the body of Christ. The Bible says that we are made up of lively stones, fitly joined together. We are the body of Christ. And Christ says, my house, shall be called a house of prayer. 
my question to you is, how is your prayer life? How is your communication with God? How is your intercourse and how is your change? exchange with God. Jesus says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. He went further and said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. And that word faint means to stop or to cease or to give up hope in prayer. He says, men should always pray and not faint. That word faint in the Greek language means to give up on. It means to cease. It means to stop. And it means to stop as if what you were doing did not have the desired effect. He said men should always pray. And don't give up on it. Don't quit. Don't stop. Because you have not received the benefits of what you were doing. And Jesus says this, my house shall be called a house of prayer. He says, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Here's my question to all those that are look, listening to me. Thank you. And God bless you to all those that are watching me in Africa. God bless you. Uh, I will be with you soon. Thank you for listening right there in Kenya to all my listeners that are following me in Pakistan. Don't worry. The doctor will be in Pakistan in June. We will be there to discuss further the kingdom of God. And Jesus is saying this, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it. What is he talking about it? He says, you made my house a den of thieves. My question to you is, what is in your life that is stealing your prayer life? What's in your life that's making you not become a house of prayer? Is it your job? Is it your second and third job? Are you more concerned with trying to make a living instead of doing what God called you to do and to be a house of prayer. And when you are a house of prayer, all the stuff that you work in these two and three jobs for, the Bible says, if you seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, all the stuff you slaving over, all the stuff you work in two and three jobs for, all the stuff that you work in all this overtime, that you don't even have the time to enjoy the stuff you working for. You're working yourself to death. You're sweating, trying to make ends meet. Jesus said, if you just become a house of prayer and you allow me to be God in your life, if you will seek first my kingdom, if you would pray what I'm trying to get done in the earth realm, he says, all this stuff you slaving over, I'll give it to you. If you make my house a house of prayer. What is stealing your prayer life? Is it your friends? Is it hanging out at the mall? I know you look good. I know those stilettos is rocking on you, baby, but is it stealing your prayer life? Yeah. Is going out stealing your prayer life? Is hanging around people with no prayer life stealing your prayer life? He says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. What's in your life that's stealing your communication with God? What's taking it? Is it HBO Max? Is Netflix stealing your prayer life? Yeah, it's HBO Max, it's Hulu, Facebook, Instagram, it's TikTok still in your prayer life. I just got a question for you today. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. You have allowed things to come into my temple and steal the very thing that I wanted to have in my temple. And that is a communication with the father. Listen, you have been given the right and the responsibility to pray God's 
purpose here on the earth. Genesis 1:26 says, and he gave them dominion. You have dominion over this earth realm. God has set it up so that his children will have dominion over this earth realm. If you don't believe me, let's go to Psalms 115 and 19. It says the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. Whatever's going on in this earth realm, mankind has the responsibility over it. We got to stop asking God, God, what are you doing? Why are you letting this happen? And God is saying, why are you letting this happen? Because I gave you dominion over the earth. You, If you bind the things that need to be bind, and if you loose the things that need to be loose, then I will agree with you on earth and heaven, and I'll call it done in heaven. But if you don't do it on the earth, I cannot do it in the heaven because I gave the earth to my children. All the wars that we having is because we have stopped praying. Yeah. We stop praying and we start playing on the golf course. And I know it looked like I just left the golf course, but I ain't. I've been praying. I'm trying to get us to understand Jesus said that my house shall be called a house of prayer. Prayer is a fundamental prayer is the number one assignment that God has given to mankind. If you don't believe me, go back to the beginning. Whatever God wanted in the beginning, that's what he wants now. And the only thing God wanted from Adam was a communication with him. All he wanted was to walk and talk with him in the cool of the eve. That's all God wanted from mankind. He didn't want all this stuff that we're doing now. He didn't want all these concerts. He didn't want all these conferences. He didn't want all these things. Why? Because there's no preacher in the garden. There's no praise and worship in the garden. Your worship was your communication with the Father because worship, the highest form of worship, is obedience. Worship is not a slow song. It's when you obey God. That's when you are obedient and you are worshiping God. And the Bible says, how can you worship? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Only him that has clean hands and a pure heart. And how can you have clean hands and a pure heart? You have it when you obey God. When you don't obey God, you can, sling, you can sing all the slow songs you want to. You can cry. You can slob all over the carpet till we have to clean it. But until your hands get clean and until your heart is clean, there is no true worship. God wants obedience. He don't want all this sacrifice that we're doing. He simply wants you to obey his word. And Jesus said men ought to always pray. Listen, if, if Jesus is our model, if he's our blueprint, if you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus entire life consisted of communication with God. That's why Jesus was powerful because he stayed in contact with the father. We think that we can just get in and out of the, of the presence of God. We, we think that if we go to church on a Sunday that we have fulfilled our duty of communing with God, I come to tell you, if God is your father, he wants total custody of you, not weekend visitations. God don't want to come see you on weekends. He wants to be your God on Monday. He wants to tell you what to do on Tuesday. He wants to order your footsteps on Wednesday. But all we want to do is visit God like he's it, like he he was divorced from our mother and we can only see him on weekends. He says my house shall be called a house of prayer. This is something I want you to write down. This is something I want you to get in your spirit. Listen, without God, man cannot. Let me say this again. Without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. Let me repeat that because this ain't a tongue twister. Without God, man cannot do what we're called to do in this earth realm. But without man, God does not have legal right into the earth realm because he made it himself. 
He says, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. There has to be a consensus between heaven and earth. That's why the scripture says that the whole creation is groaning. That's why we're having these earthquakes. These earthquakes are shouting to mankind. That's why we're having tornadoes and all these different types of things because the Bible says the whole creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The trees are waiting on you to find out who you really are. The ground is waiting on you to return back to who you are when you were in the garden. Creation is waiting on mankind to be begin to step out and tell it what to do. But we can't do it unless we are praying to the Father. Listen, call me 414-578-1560. All I want you to tell me is, Doctor, I'm going back to being a house of prayer. Just tell me I will be a house of prayer. I will be a conduit in this earth realm that God can flow through, that the purposes of God can be fulfilled in this earth realm. And listen, our job is to pray the purposes of God. God didn't tell you to pray your purposes. He said, pray his purposes. He said, Jesus, when he taught us to pray, he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Not your will, but his will. Come on, you're on the line with Dr. Robinson. Turn your turn your radio down just a little bit. Dr. Robinson, I will be a house of prayer. God bless you. Thank you, woman of God. Let's get back to praying. Listen, if we begin to pray, I'm trying to tell you that there is a David, even in our midst, that's called Ukraine, that's going up against a Goliath. And Goliath thought that he was going to whoop Ukraine in five days. I'm trying to get you to understand that God is doing what he said he would do. If the church would return back to prayer, we can stop all the stuff that's going on. We can stop all the crime that's going on in our cities. If my people, which are called by my name, if we just would return back to prayer and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, he said in his word, he would hear from heaven and heal our land. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for going back and making your house house of prayer. Come on, call me 414-578-1560. Just say, Dr. Robinson, I'm going to turn off Hulu and I'm going to get into prayer. I'm going to turn off Netflix and get back to prayer. Yes, I'm going to stop watching all the games on NBA. Is NBA TV stopping you from praying? Is NFL Live stopping you from praying? Is that stealing from you what God said that his house shall be a house of prayer, but we've made it a den of thieves? Matthew 17, 21 says this, how be it, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. I'm trying to get you to understand there's some stuff in this world that ain't going to go out until the church begins to fast and pray again. I'm telling you, there's some demonic forces and there's some ancient spirits, some ancient demonic principalities and powers that and so-called powers of this earth realm that will not go out but by fasting and praying but i'm telling you if we touch and agree if we begin to grab hold to the horns of the altar again like we have never done before i'm telling you milwaukee can be the habitation of our god you're on the line with dr robinson praise the lord this is brother hill deacon hill I'm fasting and I'm gonna pray. Praise the Lord. God Thank you, Jesus. You. God bless you, Deacon Hill. That's all we want. I just want, if I can just come on call, I just want a hundred people that will say, Dr. Robinson, I'm going back to being a house of prayer. I'm going to turn off the television. I'm going to turn off social media. I'm going to turn off all these things that's still in my prayer life. You're on the line with Dr. Robinson. Turn your radio down Lord, just a little God bit. God be the glory, yeah. Hey, I'm going to keep on praying. More prayer, more power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. I'm going to keep on praying like the song says.
Pray on my child. God bless you. God bless you, woman of God. This is what all I want to hear. Just type in if you're on Facebook. Type in if you're on YouTube. Just say, Dr. Robinson, I will return to being a house of prayer. I'm going to go back to my first principles. I'm going to go back to my first love. And my first love is communication with God. Prayer is communication with God. Prayer is that you hear from God and you get the mind of God and you execute the mind of God right here on the earth. You're on the line with Dr. Robinson. Go ahead. Yes, Dr. Robinson, I'm going to go back. We're going back. We, I ain't going to say I'm weak. Girlfriend, I'm right with you. We going back to yes. being a house of prayer. We're Thank you. Back. Thank you, woman of God. Yes. This is what we want. We just want to. There you go. Thank you for typing in. I'm, I'm going to be a house of prayer. This is what God is requiring. He's looking for some houses of prayer. What if we had houses of prayer on Fond du Lac? What if we had houses of prayer on Sherman Drive? What if we had houses of prayer on Capitol Drive? What if we had houses of prayer downtown and all over Milwaukee? I'm trying to get us to understand that if we go back to being a house of prayer, God's will, his will will be done right here in Milwaukee, just as it is in heaven. I'm trying to get you to understand there is no lack in heaven. If we return back to being houses of prayer, there'll be no lack right here on earth, right here in Milwaukee. There is no poverty in heaven. If we go back to praying, I'm telling you his kingdom will manifest right here in Milwaukee and there'll be no poverty. If we go back to praying, there's no sickness in heaven. If we begin to pray, there'll be no sickness out right here in the earth. But the problem is we have stopped praying and start playing. Oh my God. God, I know you ain't going to want to hear me up in here, up in here, but I'm trying to get us to understand that Jesus said, this is from the mouth of the master. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. What's still in your prayer life? Yeah. Is your children still in your prayer life? Is chores still in your prayer life? What's making your temple a den of thieves? Is sin still in your prayer life? Because some of us, when we sin, we act like we can't go to the Father. But Jesus said, if you come to me and repent, he says, I'm faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He said, listen, it, it makes no difference what you've done. When you repent, I take your sins and I cast it as far as the east is from the west. But what we have, we, we allow the enemy to, to allow us to engage in sin and then sin brings condemnation and now we don't want to come to God. And then when we pray, we, I, we, we, we pray like we don't even supposed to be there. Well, God, I, I come to you and Lord, you know I, I'm just a filthy rag. You, you know... I shouldn't even be here. And if you, if that's the way you feel when you pray, please get up. Go get you some buns, get you some potato chips. Because God says when you come to me, you got to come boldly. Come on, talk to me. That's what the book says in Hebrews. Come boldly unto the throne of grace. Hebrews 4, chapter 12. Come boldly. Don't come acting like you shouldn't even be there. You have a right to be there because you're his child. When your children mess up, you don't kick them out. Now, you do want to slap them upside the head a couple of times, but you don't kick them out. You let them come. And you deal with what, they, what they've done. But you love on them. And if we know how to love on our children, how much more who God, that's all he is, is love. He'll love on you. And he'll bring you back into the fold. Just call me, 414 five seven eight one five six so just say dr robinson i'm going back to being a house of prayer my life is going it is going to exemplify prayer the bible says early in the morning will i rise up and seek thee will we begin our day in prayer i'm trying to tell you jesus said that in when he gave the model prayer he said give us this day our daily bread. I'm trying to tell you, if you wake up and eat right, you won't be going off 
when you're driving in the car, you won't be flipping the bird to folks when they cut you off if you eat right. Because God says it, Jesus said that if you come to the Father and you say, give me my daily bread, there is something that God will give you early in the morning that will sustain you throughout the day. God will prepare you for what your boss is about to do once you get to work. And you'll already be prepared. You'll be prayed up. And when he comes in flipping out, you'll just be there like Jesus it says, forgive him, Lord, because he don't know what he's doing. You'll be prepared for the day. But the reason we're not prepared for the day is because half of us get up late. We run to work late. We don't have time to pray. We be trying to get our clothes on, throw a piece of bread in our mouth and walk out the door. When God says, commune with me. He says, early in the morning will I rise up and seek thee. How many of us are, are making time with God? The Bible talks about appointed times. How, how, how many of us are making appointed times with God? How many of us have prayer closets? And that prayer closet is a place where you shut everything out that's outside. There's no distractions where there's nobody but you and God. You can hear from him. He can hear from you and have the stuff you tripping over. He'll just give you the answer to. When we go back to being house of prayer I hope you hear the spirit of God today God is calling for houses of prayer all over this world God bless you Bishop Moses in Kenya he's calling for us to be houses of prayer and I'm praying today that God will forever bless you I'm praying that God will forever keep you I'm praying that God will forever make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto thee. My prayer is that God will lift up his countenance and be gracious unto thee and give thee peace. This is what we need in our world today. We need peace. Will you be with me? Will you stand with me and be a house of prayer? May God forever bless you. May he keep you. As always, my prayer.